Our final entrepreneurship award uh, goes to um, Glenn Reed of Marathon Laundry Machines. While his background is in computer and software, not manufacturing, Glenn realized many products now are now controlled by computers, meaning his experience uh, could make the, compu the company more competitive with industry giants. Since its founding, Marathon has launched multiple models of combined uh, washing machines and dryers that also provide data to users and building owners. Please welcome Glenn Reed. Last and perhaps least, uh, I never know what to say to a room full of people who want to know what life is like as an entrepreneur, but there's, there's an old sailing joke that I repurpose, which is, if you want to know what it's like to be an entrepreneur, stand in a cold shower and rip up $100 bills. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, unlike Jeremy, who follows his curiosity to start new things, I find that irritation is the mother of invention. Things that bug me have led me to my career path. It's a weird way to get into things, but I see problems. I see things that suck, and like, somebody should fix that. I guess it's going to be me, you know. Uh, it's an accidental path for some of us, like you keep stumbling into some big problem and wonder why somebody hasn't solved it yet. But it's, I'm honored to be awarded. I've been showing off my honorary badge all morning. And, uh, but I, I feel like there's an inverse to this, which is it's easy to be successful and tell everybody all the things you did right that led to your success. And people are like, would that work for me? I don't know, maybe not. There's no generalizable formula. I tend to look at what defines us as people is what we do when things suck, when things are failing, when we're down. So <clears throat> uh, several of us have said, including Wayne, just don't give up. It sounds like a cliche, but it's kind of what defines successful entrepreneurship. We've been almost dead I, so many times in this business. You just Figure it out, do something, you know. It's, things are over when you quit, not when, when you're defeated. Like, there's always some way out. Being from California, I, I think half the people I've met here are like, what the hell are you doing in Milwaukee, you know? And there's some good reasons for that, but one of the reasons is our place that we were renting was being bulldozed in California. We could not find a, 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 an affordable place to build stuff. I'm like, what the hell are we gonna do? Stop, you know? I'm like, no, let's move somewhere where it's cheaper. And, you know, I had been visiting here, and I'm like, it's about 10 times cheaper to rent space in Milwaukee than it is in Silicon Valley. We were able to, you know, double our floor space and pay half the rent. So I was like, let's do that. We just literally put the company in a truck and pointed it at Milwaukee, and like, we'll figure it out when we get there. And. It turned out it was just me. Nobody else wanted to move to Milwaukee. For, so. <laughs> so I brought my daughter. We unloaded the truck. Like, all right, let's, you know, and we're in an old space down on West St. Paul across from Solomon's where the plumbing and electrical are sort of functional and it's 100 years old, but it's a great place to be. So, you know, something knocks you down, you get back up. Something knocks you down, you get back up. A few years ago, Northwestern Mutual did a big event called Fall X. Maybe some of you went to that. I was excited. I thought it was Fail X because it had a bad logo. You couldn't tell what, what the, the letters were. And I said, that's a great idea. Like, have a celebrate failure. Get all the people who failed and get them up on stage and say, what did you, what went wrong, you know? There's much more to be learned from the dark down failure side of it than there is from the, you know, higher the best people like what if you got no money and nobody wants to work for you like figure it out and I still think fail X would be a great idea we should do that and you know Silicon Valley there's a cliche like you have to fail and all that stuff no one wants to fail obviously it, it's it's the worst place to be but you do learn something from that sometimes it's I shouldn't have given up you know like you sometimes learn that we could have done it if we if only had met that person sooner or, uh, you know, hire Jay Cray as your lawyer, which I highly recommend too. Um, it, you know, it's, it's, I don't know what the lesson is exactly, but uh, if, if being an entrepreneur is a lifestyle choice for you, you wanna hang out in a cafe with your laptop and be cool, 
probably not the right thing. If it's a calling, like I can't not do this, it's, it's compelling me. It's more of a curse than it is a choice. Like, shit, I got to do this, you know? And luckily I have a supporting family and a few friends. And, <laughs> uh, but there, most people are just like, what the hell is he doing? You know, it's, a, it's a, the, the loneliness that Jeremy mentioned. Sometimes it's because people don't get you. Like, what the heck is he doing and why? And, you know, we happen to choose one of the most difficult problem spaces there was, starting an appliance company, which nobody's done in, what, 70 years, um, creating a new category, which I underestimated, like getting people to not use a washer and a dryer. Just use one machine, it's like your dishwasher. You don't have a dish dryer. All those things are harder than they seem, uh, except fundraising. Fundraising is super easy. All you have to do is... <laughs> All you have to do is write me a check. It's just that simple. So, uh, so yeah, that's all I got. And my, my timer went red. So thank you for honoring me t today.